kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Drenda, and years ago, I was a broken, emotionally wounded feminist with no hope until I found the secret to life. Now, I want to guide you on your journey to find what really matters. Counselor, speaker, and author, Drenda Cassie wants you and your family to find happiness, live spiritually, prosper emotionally. Let Drenda show you how. Drenda Cassie on social media for tips on how to see your life transformed and become a better you. My favorite part of XM is praise and worship. Every single week, there's pizza. The interaction with friends, even if you don't know anybody. So just meeting new people every week and building relationships. It's awesome. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Pastor Tim. And Pastor Alicia. And we want to invite you to join us every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. If you're XM age range or all access, that's ages 13 to 18 years old. We have so much fun here at XM. Look forward to seeing you on a Tuesday night. We're in the middle of a journey. We're starting something new. Your journey's not over. I know that because you're still here. You're still here.
worship Jesus. Come on. My heart is set on you alone. My mind is on your perfect love. Yes. I'm letting go of all that fear. Got my eyes on you. Got my ears to your word. You say I am victorious. Yes. You say that I am worth your love. Jesus, so I will stand in faith. I fix my eyes on you, Jesus. I'm trusting in your name. Hey. Oh, yes, Lord. We focus on your life. Hearts 
sing and shout with you, bursting like heaven in motion. Jesus, you make me new. I'm pressing on with my back to the past and oh, let the young see visions of the future. And I sing oh, let the into your presence, Lord Jesus. Right now we receive your grace, your strength, your wisdom, your purpose, your anointing that literally destroys everything that tries to hold us back. We thank you in your presence, God. We can celebrate the new season the new thing that you're doing in each and every one of our lives. And so we worship you. We worship you, Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. Emmanuel, you are here with us right now. This is holy ground. in your presence I know that angels gather around right now and saints lay down their crowns when the king of glory speaks oh and when you speak Lord your voice it shakes the wind It's a roaring sound within, and this is our response. We're singing holy, 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 holy. Is 
good all the time. Amen. Well, welcome everybody tonight. It's good to have you with us. And uh, hey, if you're a first time guest, there on your seat is a connection card. If you would like to fill that out, you can fill it out. You can drop it in the bucket at the back door on your way out. And we'd love to send you Pastor Gary's uh, book, Kingdom Thoughts. We won't call you, bother you or anything like that, but we know it will encourage your faith. And uh, if you want to take that home with you today, you can take it out to the welcome kiosk and get that book there. And uh, while you're there, grab one of the Living the Good Life t-shirts there. You can see on the side screen and uh, remind yourself, God has a good life for you to live. Are you guys ready to get into the word tonight? Awesome. We're excited about this weekend. I know you'll get a lot out of it. If you're joining us online, thanks so much for joining us. Come on, give it up for those folks as well. On the side of the page is a connection card. You can fill that out as well. And we'd love to send you Pastor Gary's book. But if you want a t-shirt, come see us in person sometime. We'd love to see you. Uh, you can be seated. We're going to check out some announcements and then get into the word today. everybody. Welcome to Faith Life Church. We're so excited to have you here with us. Let's take a look at what's happening at Faith Life to keep you in the now. Whether you feel like your story is big or small, we want to hear it. We all have a story to share. If you're a teenager, parent, anyone, your story could impact someone's life. You can even send a video from your phone. So all you have to do is go to faithlifechurch.org and click under the stories tab. God's word in bacon. Mmm, sounds like the perfect way to start the day. For all the guys, we're having a men's breakfast on Saturday, January 30th at 9 a.m. This will be at Faith Life Church at the New Albany campus. Join us for a great time of eating, connecting, and learning from God's Word. This weekend, we're continuing our monthly Kingdom Track experience. We want to equip you to live the Kingdom life in your faith and family as you discover your destiny in Christ. It will only take 60 minutes. A meal and child care are provided. Okay. All right. Well, hey, it's the beginning of the year, and I decided I need to get in shape. In fact, I think we all do. And what we're going to do at Faith Life Church is offer what we call Super Set Weekends. That's where we're going to do every single service, all four, different. You know what it's going to do? It's going to speed up your training. It's going to allow you to get stronger in Christ a lot faster. I think it'll be great. So stay tuned and we'll have it on our websites. We'll announce it at church, but I expect to see you at the next Superset Weekend. All right. Enough. We're so happy you joined us this weekend at Faith Life Church. It's our heart that you would experience the kingdom in your faith, family, and finances. For more information on how you can stay in the now, visit our website at faithlifechurch.org or check us out on social media. Let's get ready for a great message. Thank you for joining us and keep living the good life. This is the good life. to our Super Set Financial Freedom Weekend. Awesome. Glad to have you all here. It's going to be a great weekend. Welcome to our online campus again. I wanted to say I'm glad you're here. 
And uh, your attendance, of course, is, is vital. So we're going to jump right into this, get your pencils and papers out. Uh, we got a lot to cover quickly tonight, and so we're going to do that. So I'm going to start this over. We're taping this, of course, for our small groups. So I want to say welcome to our Financial Freedom Workshop, our small group. I'm glad that you are here. Our nine simple steps to financial freedom small group. And we're going to have a great time going through this because you're here and you have chosen to be here, and that's what I'm excited about. You know, I want to start with an introduction about this series, our Superset Weekend, if you will. We're doing it here at Faith Life and taping this right now. But nine simple steps to financial freedom sounds simple, but you'll have to be involved. It will take some energy on your part to tap into what we're talking about. But I want to talk about how this is going to operate. You should have your workbook in front of you. You'll find there are eight chapters. We're going to cover all eight chapters through eight weeks. You'll find the workbook has two sections. One that has some teaching, and then it has another section that covers practical how-to information. You'll need to be aware of both sides. Now also there's reflective questions that I really want you to spend the time answering between these sessions because it'll help you allow the Holy Spirit to speak and hear him as he directs your path. Also each week we'll be giving you a homework assignment to bring to the next following small group. Now at the end our objective is that you'll come out inspired of course but with a I can do this attitude I can be free financially and we'll have the data and the numbers to help prove it to you and we believe it'll be life-changing. But first let me give you an introduction of, of really some things you need to grab a hold of. First off we live in a world that is in chaos and financially speaking People are in debt. And this system of debt is a purposed event. Satan hates God's kingdom. Now, obviously, he stole provision from Adam and Eve back in the beginning, and he tries to keep provision from you as well. But we're going to show you exactly how you can tap into the freedom the kingdom of God promises. To understand this, you need to understand that you have a purpose, a spiritual reason for being on the earth. You're not someone just floundering around. God happened to sit on the earth and kind of watch and see if you make it. That's not how it works. You are a child of the living God, and he has given you promises that, well, freedom is yours, but freedom has a purpose. It's great to be free, but you're free to carry out an assignment for the kingdom of God here on the earth. Now, unfortunately, financial bondage stops people from reaching their assignment. And we're going to talk about that. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, about what you'll eat or drink, or about your body, or what you'll wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Notice that Jesus says life is more than anything in the earth realm. You see, all of these things, clothing, houses, cars, are designed to serve you and your assignment. But what has happened is we are now serving those things. We're spending our time, our energy, our life enslaved for those things and then not allowing us to be free to serve God. But I want you to get the picture and flip it upside down to realize these things are to serve you and your assignment. Matthew chapter 6 verse 31 says, Do not worry... That's twice he said that, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the unbeliever does what? Runs after these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all of these things will be given to you. Notice he did not say, seek God first. He said, seek the kingdom. Learn how the kingdom operates and what God calls right. All of these things will be added to you. So we have to learn some things to be effective in life and to walk in freedom. Now, because people don't have the knowledge of the kingdom, they walk in slavery. That's right. They walk in slavery. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 7 says, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the borrower. Now, nothing wrong with being rich. He's just stating a fact that slavery, when you don't have money, 
and you live in debt, you become a slave to someone. And we know that's not good. Now, Drew and I have had a statement we've said for years, and that is if you don't fix the money thing, you'll never find your destiny, never discover your purpose in the earth realm. And so we want to help you get there today. Let me tell you just quickly our story. You may have already heard it, but basically... You know, we're just average people growing up in middle-class homes in America. We were born again and, uh, you know, began to pursue God, love God, love the anointing. I have a, a, an Old Testament degree, a Bible study, year under my belt at a Bible college, and love God, love church, but hopelessly in debt. When I say hopelessly, I'm talking about painfully, hopelessly depressed in debt. Not for a month, not for a week, but for nine years. Nine years living like that. And so, you know, we lived in a little farmhouse that was falling apart. The windows had duct tape to keep the cold air out. Cracks were on the windows. The carpet that was in our living room had been there since 1930, whenever the house was remodeled who knows how long ago. The carpeting in our boys' bedroom we found in a trash pile along the road. The mattresses we found in a nursing home discard pile. We received notices consistently from various credit cards, lenders, uh, electric company, you name it. People are always knocking on our door or calling our phone asking where's the check and we'd have to consistently say, well, you know, uh, we'll try to get it to you, right? But you know what? That was a lot of stress. That was horribly. You know, I always say financial stress is a slow death. It really is because without finances, there's no vision. Catch this word. Provision is provision. Without provision, there is no vision. And you are just existing in survival mode and not dreaming, not advancing. And that is how we lived those years until it came to a head out of everything, nine years. An attorney called one day and said, listen, you've got to pay this bill. I said, well, you know, he said, listen, you've said the last three times I've called that you're going to pay this bill. He said, I'm giving you three days to pay it or we're filing our lawsuit against you on behalf of our client. And for whatever reason that day, it just struck me that I'm out. I'm done. I had no options. Our refrigerator was empty. I didn't have much money coming in. We were on commission sales. Uh, emotionally, I was drained. I was actually full of fear. I was afraid to leave my house. It doesn't do too well when you're in sales, by the way. I had no hope. I was hopeless. I was depressed. I was on antidepressants. I was having panic attacks. I was going to the doctors. Uh, I went to the emergency room. I mean, I, was, I didn't know if I'd live or die. This was serious. And I crawled up to that little uh, bedroom in that little farmhouse, and I cried out to God. And he answered me. You know, it's interesting. <laughs> you say, you may wonder why I waited nine years. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't answer the question. I guess I just kept thinking that things would work out. And, you know, obviously I was, I was, thought I was trusting God, but actually I found out I wasn't trusting God. And he said, you're in this mess. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> just so you know. You ever heard someone say, well, I don't know why God's not. Well, there's a reason why he's not. It's not him. Anyway, that's the first thing he said. He said, listen, you're in this mess because you've never learned how my kingdom operates. Now that took me off guard. Kingdom operates? I mean, I have an Old Testament degree. What do you mean? How? I don't know what you mean. And then he went on to say, my people are like Israel was in Egypt. They're making bricks for Pharaoh. They're bound financially. And he says, I want them free. Now at that time, I didn't understand exactly all he said. But I know I went and found Drenda. We prayed and we said, look, God, you got to help us. We don't know what you mean by kingdom. We repent. And he began to take us on a journey of discovery of his kingdom. And in two and a half years, we were completely out of debt. Now, we had IRS liens, owed tens of thousands to our family. I mean, we had some pretty good-sized problems. But in two and a half years, completely out of debt, we were paying cash for our dream house on 60 acres at the time, 55 acres at the time, I guess, which we paid cash for and built our home. It's paid for. And I can tell you, we built that house. I mean, I stood there. We just wept. We could not hardly comprehend 
what was actually happening before our eyes. We were so excited to see God move and see things change that we made a commitment that we were going to spend the rest of our life helping people understand how to get free. Listen, I'm the poster child of what not to do. You know, I'm telling you from my experience, this isn't some just a little talk I'm doing because I, I get paid to be here. I'm telling you because this is my passion. I want to see you free, and God wants to see you free. And you can be. Now listen, as we go through this, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to be tempted to come under condemnation. Yeah, you're going to be tempted to think, oh, you know, we don't like to hear about stuff like that, right? It's like, you're going to feel, you're going to be tempted to think bad about yourself. It's too late. You know, I'm, I'm buried. I mean, I've made all these mistakes. Well, I'll tell you what, I was 40 years old in this story when I first began to get out of debt. It's never too late. So listen, God's in your future, not your past. And so let's get settled into God's future. Let's believe what God says and let's see what will happen. You know, several weeks ago, I was at a doctor's appointment with my mom and just talking to the nurse as they were getting her ready. You know, she just asked me what I did for a living. And I got to tell her about what we did and about finances and my company and the church and the ministry and how great God is. And she said, I don't have anything. So I don't have anything. So I, I'm, I just live paycheck to paycheck. So I have nothing. Interesting, the same day I went to a second another appointment. You know how doctors work together. And the nurse began talking and she said exactly the same thing. She said, I have nothing. I don't have anything. I have no retirement. I have no, I'm living just paycheck to paycheck and I'm in debt. I keep, my debt goes up every month and says, I need to talk to you. You know, when Drenda and I started out in our married life, we got into finances. God put us into that business. We've been in finances for 40 years now and of course pastoring as well. But I've had firsthand experience of sitting across the kitchen table of tens of thousands of people over those 40 years. And I'm telling you, it's not good out there. It's not good at all. And I remember the, one of the calls that broke my heart was this elderly lady that said, could you please help me come to my house and it, it, could you just help me get out of debt? So, you know, I, I did. I went to her house. We met at a, you know, I didn't go to a single woman's home, but we met somewhere where, you know, public, I could talk to her for a few moments. And she began to describe her situation and how she was broke. And I found out in asking her questions that she had 52 different credit cards. Now, I think that's probably the record in all my 40 years in the financial services industry. 40 active credit cards. And she'd get another card to pay the payments. And that got maxed out. She'd get another one and she'd keep rolling along. And the only reason she called me, you can guess, she ran out of credit cards. And as I was talking to her, you know, and began to tell her, ma'am, you've got to cut these credit cards up. You can't live this way. You already know that. She began to cry. And what she said shocked me. She said, well, how am I going to buy shoes? And I couldn't even comprehend that because I would thought she'd say, how am I going to pay my rent or how am I going to have food to eat? But she said, how am I going to buy shoes? There's something wrong with that picture. It's like, but nevertheless, people's priorities get out of line, get themselves in debt. So I want to begin in chapter 1. Chapter 1 in your book is called Satan's Deception. Now Satan's deception is this, that you have to use debt to survive in life. That you need to use debt to have anything. You may have heard someone say that. Well, if it wasn't for debt, we wouldn't have anything at all. That's a deception, and Satan's done a great job marketing it across the country, hasn't he? Most people you ask, can you have cash, pay your house off? Or would you pay cash for your house? The concept of even paying your house off for most people is totally foreign. In fact, if you ask people if they have any debt and they said no, they don't usually include their mortgage. They think you're talking simply about consumer debt. If you ask them a little deeper, no, I understand, but is your house paid for well, no, it's not paid off. Well, I just asked you if you're out of debt and you said you were. Oh, I thought you meant like I don't have any car payments or credit cards. The concept of having debt free living and having resources that are available is almost foreign to most people in this nation. You know, we've been brainwashed. If you watch any ad, they never advertise the price, they advertise the payment. 
Everything is marketed by payment. But this stands in direct contrast to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12. You will lend, speaking to Israel, you will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. How many? None. none. Borrow from none. You will lend, meaning that you're now the head, not the tail. You're the one that has the resources. You're the one that is now lending. You have money. Now, Satan does not want you to prosper. Obviously, you'd be about God's business. He wants you to be so entangled in your debt, your personal financial problems, that you leave sight of ever having an assignment in the kingdom of God. He never wants you to even discover your, your assignment in the kingdom of God. So, you ever heard this phrase, the devil's in the details? Yeah, I think so. Well, he is. He has set, as we've seen this chapter, Satan's deception. He has set traps to ensnare you and to stop you. Now, hopefully, as we cover some of these things, you will be aware of them and avoid them and also be encouraged to believe God, what his word says, you can advance in life financially free. Let me give you an example. 30-year mortgage, right? Everyone has one? No, they don't. Everyone doesn't have a 30-year mortgage, all right? But most people do. So let's say you're buying a house. $250,000 house, you need, well, uh, you know, 300, whatever it is, but your mortgage is roughly um, around two, let's just say this, make it simple, $250,000 house. In today's market, that is your average, that's your kind of your average housing price out there. Let's say you have a 3% interest rate, which is also in the range of current rates. Now, if you pay the payment on that house, for 30 years, you're going to pay this. You're going to pay $606,800 for that $250,000 house. So you're going to pay quite a bit more than you thought you were going to pay. But that's not all. Now, you're paying $356,000 more. You understand there's interest and time. So, yes, you understand. Okay, so two fifty, dollars and I'm actually paying $356,000 more than the price of the house over this 30 years. But you forgot to calculate a couple things. What about the taxes and the tithe that you had to pay on that extra money? The 356000 I mean, we know to have the principal to pay the two fifty, dollars you had to pay taxes already and tithe, right? But if we add the interest payments, you got to pay taxes and tithe to pay the interest. So if you add that 40%, you're going to pay another additional $142,000 on top of the additional $356,000. Let me just sum it up this way. You're going to pay $249,000 for that house that cost $250,000. Let me break it up a little further for you. Let's say you make $50,000 a year. If you took every penny you made for every penny coming in to pay that debt, it would take you 20 years. Now, let me ask you a question. How much time do you have? Now, we talk about people retiring broke a lot. And in fact, most do. But now you're finding out how that happens. You see, you can't afford to pay 20 years for a house that costs $250,000 and have money left over to pay for groceries and cars. And Oh, speaking of cars... A $40,000 car in the same kind of calculation would cost $46,000, additional $6,000 to buy the car. Using debt adds all kinds of expenses and money to the original price, to the original price that you have to pay. Proverbs chapter 22, 7 again says, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. Now, we know what a slave is. Slave is someone who works for someone else, and many times not voluntarily, right? And so if you're in financial slavery, what is that telling you? What are you doing? You are making profit. You are making money, but you are a slave to who? What does the Bible say? The lender. And so who's taking your profit? The lender. You're making it all right, but you're sending it in envelopes or automatic drafts or whatever to the lender. You're not getting to keep your profit. Hard labor come to mind? Joyful slaves come to mind? Probably not. 
Most slaves are not joyful. Why? Because they have no options. They don't get to take vacation when they want to. They have to show up at a certain time, leave at a certain time. They lead a, reg lead a regimented, regimented life of slavery. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry I'm getting close to home as I describe that, aren't I? Listen, wouldn't it be great to have options? Wouldn't it be great? You know, it's sad, but 70% of people don't like their jobs. 30-some percent literally hate them. Have you ever heard someone say, I have to go to work today? Have you ever heard someone say, I have to go play golf today? <laughs> Probably not. I get to go play golf today. It's my day off. Wouldn't it be awesome if you had the same passion for your assignment, what you did in life, as you did for a hobby? You know what? God meant it to be that way. He really did. So are we slaves? Let's review life in America. We live in houses we don't own. We drive cars we don't own. We wear clothes to go to work to pay for the car in the house we don't own. We wear the clothes that we paid with a Visa card or a store card. We furnish our homes so the house we live in is nice and comfortable while we are enslaved with debt. <laughs> we send this, our kids to school many times on debt. People many times buy groceries on debt. And friends, we live a indebted lifestyle. Now the sad state of slavery in the United States, I'm laying this as a foundation, so don't get discouraged, but I wanna wake you up. You need to understand this is serious business and that it affects your life, it affects your kids. It affects, your, it affects everything about your life. The sad state of slavery in America is that 69% of Americans could not come up with $1,000 if you asked them. 70% of this nation's people could not write a check for $1,000 without planning for it ahead of time. Fear must grip their hearts every day. Fear must grip their hearts every day. 44% of people cannot pay an unexpected bill of $400. 23% of Americans cannot even pay their monthly expenses, thus they're going in debt every month further. 43% of Americans struggle to pay their bills, meaning they just barely make it each month. 49% of Americans bring home less than $30,000 a year. It's about $2,500 a month. 73% of Americans die in debt. Now, listen, these people have no options. When you're living that close with no finances, you don't dream. You know what you dream of? Escaping. You don't dream of creating. You dream of finding a place to escape the pressures, the drudgery, the boring endless life of paying bills. Now, credit cards are a lot to blame for this, of course. They're very convenient. The first credit card you would have thought would have started back in 1805 or something, as many that, as are out there. But they started in 1950, not long ago. And currently today, there's 20,000 different credit cards out there you can have. Pick your color. Pick your title. Platinum, whatever it takes any kind of perks, any kind of title to make you feel special, as long as you take the card, will make you a diamond or a platinum or an emerald or whatever you want to call it. They're going to entice you to feel good about yourself. Don't leave home without it. The credit card industry took in $60 billion in fees in 2017. 40% of Americans now spend more than they make. And 49% can't cover one month's living expense if they lose their income. They have no savings. Half of America. What kind of fear do they, I mean, think of the stress they live under. Be concerned about each day and each week. Unexpected bills. Most people buy their cars with debt. Um, consumer debt is, of course, setting records. Four trillion dollars consumer debt now in the U.S. You've heard a lot about student loans lately. That's 1.4 trillion dollars in student loans. In fact, 44 million Americans are still paying student loans. Now, let me ask you a question. Would you actually sign up for hard labor and slavery on purpose? Probably not. That's why we call it Satan's 
deception, right? Deception. Let me ask you a question. Why do you think you get the same, well, let me ask you, do you get the same kind of credit card offers in the mail over and over? Or do they send it to you one time? How about every month? Yep. Every month, right? I used to think this is crazy. They're spending a lot of money. I, get the, I got this last month. I didn't answer them. It just keeps coming, right? They're fishing. They know that most people live so tight that eventually they're going to have to say yes and take the card. Take the card. It takes 22 years to pay a credit card off if you make the minimum payment. And of course, that assumes you don't use it anymore, which is not the case usually, right? They mail out about five to eight billion credit card offers a year in the U.S. Now think about it. Banks are paying, what, CDs, what, maybe two to three percent? But they have found a place to invest the current rate, January this month, the current rate in the U.S. of credit card interest rates is 16.05 percent. That's the average rate. Many higher, some lower. But that's the average rate out there being offered and people have. So if CDs are investing at 3%, the banks have found a place to invest their money at 16%. Does that make a big difference? Oh yeah, huge difference, okay? Now the total credit card debt now as of this month in the United States is $756 billion on credit cards at an average rate of 16%. Someone's getting pretty wealthy doing something, right? So let me tell you, on that average rate, so that 16% interest rate, if you just invested $25 a month from age 20 to age 70, you just start doing it at age 20, $25 a month to age 70, 50 years, it would grow to, at that interest rate, grow to $5.5 million. Retirement is well taken care of, $25 a month. But even $1 a month at that interest rate would provide you with $216,000, a little bit. Oh, wait a minute. It's only the cost of a cup of coffee a day. You ever heard that? Yeah, for the price of a cup of coffee a day, which has gone up, by the way. <laughs> it's amazing how much a cup of coffee costs nowadays. But what about the retail stores, right? You go into the retail store, you have cash in your pocket, you set the cash down, and what do they say? Would you like to take our card out and save 15% on this, this purchase right now? And being thrifty as you are, buying everything on sale, you would say, oh, I can't miss out on that. And so you take the card and you never pay it off. In fact, now you've paid more than that sweater was on sale. They got you. Now that interest rate on that card, a department store card, is not 16%, typically 23 to 25%. At 23%, our earlier illustration of $25 a month doesn't grow to 5.5 million. It grows to 1.2 billion with a B. Billion with a B. $25 a month. Even $1 a month produces 1.6 million. Friend, someone wants you in debt. And they do not want you to understand how money works. They want to move you emotionally with advertising and marketing to spend money you never planned on spending and then providing a way to pay for it and trapping you in debt. Such things as 90 days same as cash. Go try to buy an appliance or a big box store, 90 days same as cash. Sounds harmless, doesn't it? But 80% of the people that sign up for that never pay it off in that year or the 90 days. They're playing on people's emotions to trap them in debt. One year free interest, no payments until whenever. These are all schemes because they know how to exploit people's human behavior very well. They spend countless millions of dollars investigating and studying human nature. Now, basically, most people stay in debt their entire life. Let's be honest. Most people stay in debt their entire life. I know Sears is having a hard time now, but I know that for a fact, Sears and probably most big stores make more money on their credit cards than their retail products. That's why they have a department store card. They're not trying to get your cash to pay for the goods. They're trying to get the bank side moving, right? 
I want you to write this down. This is very important. You already found it out the hard way, but this is this. There is no freedom without financial freedom. Write that down. There is no freedom without financial freedom. You say, Gary, how do I get there? I mean, how, how, do, how does this happen? Two things. Write these things down. If you're going to win in life financially, number one, you have to apply natural wisdom. I mean, you live here. There's tax laws. There's laws. There's ways of commerce in the United States. You have to learn how the system works. And secondly, you need to learn how the kingdom of God operates. Two things that you need to operate in to be free. Knowledge in the natural realm, knowledge in the spiritual realm, understanding how the kingdom of God operates. As you can see in my examples, a small fragment goes a long way when used against you. But guess what? A small fragment can go a long way working for you just the same. And so in this study, we're going to help you identify fragments. We're going to help you identify things that you may not know that can help you avoid traps and also how to make money and to move ahead, as well as teaching you spiritual principles out of the Word of God. Let me say this. It kind of shocked me when God spoke this to me years ago, probably almost uh, over 30 years ago, that the average family in America could be completely debt-free in less than seven years if they really wanted to. I mean your house paid for. I mean out of debt. I've seen hundreds of people do it, in fact, in a much shorter period of time than that. Now, if that causes you to think like not possible, then we need to back up and get your possibility thinker bigger because you serve a big God. And you need, you need to work with him with the possibilities that he's giving us. So where do I start, Gary? Well, first decide that you want to take the journey. And you're, you already have. You, you got the workbook. You signed up. And I appreciate that. You're here. That's the first step. But you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision. Because past the Red Sea or the pressure, you know, making these kind of shifts in your life may cause a slight disruption in your normal way of living. Praise God for that, right? But you have the victory. You have the victory. But you have to make a decision because on the other side of the Red Sea experience is the promise. Just hold on. Just take time. Let God show you. Work with us. We're going to help you through this, this small group. But you will win. There is a better way. Living debt-free is a better way. Now, here's an interesting fact that may, I hope, inspire you. You probably already have all the money necessary to get out of debt. Now, I know that shocks everyone when I say that. But as you have seen, I've unlaid some of the traps, some of the things they're doing to take your money. What would happen if we stopped those traps? What would happen if we revealed those traps and reversed them and stopped them? The money you're now losing, actually applying it to your debt, what would that do? Well, that money is there. You may be sending it out to lenders. You may be losing it through ignorance of different laws or different principles. But once we reveal those to you, you can take that money and actually use it in your favor to pay debt off. And that gets exciting. Trust me, that is fun to do. Everyone loves a treasure hunt, right? Well, we're going to go on a great treasure hunt. So over the next few weeks, again, our objective is to help you understand how to get out of debt, take you on a journey through kingdom understanding, which we won't have time to cover a lot of it. We have a lot of other resources you can help uh, gain knowledge from. But we're going to get you down the road. My main objective is I get you to the place you say, oh yeah, I can do this. If, I, if we walk out of eight weeks and you say, you know what? I can do this. I feel like I have succeeded in our mission. And if you begin to say how you're going to do it, then I've really succeeded in my mission. And I know that God will help you along the way. And it's going to be awesome. Now, here's your first assignment for next week. Now, this is tough. You got to face, you got to face the bill drawer. Ah, the bill drawer. I know, I know, when you stuff the things in there, you're out of sight, out of mind, I know. I'm going to ask you, take the bill drawer, dump it on the kitchen table. I want you to list every single person. Well, they don't, that's just my Uncle Ralph. He died. He's not charging me interest. Debt changes the relationship. You become a slave to Uncle Ralph. 
if not physically, mentally. You begin to avoid Uncle Ralph in the grocery store because you owe him money, right? Right? That's how it is, right? I want you to list everyone you owe. All your friends, relatives, banks, you name it, taxes, whatever. I want everything written down. And then we're going to total it up. Don't let it scare you. Because God's bigger than that. He's going to help you. I want you to see past that. I want you to see past that. You know, when I was younger, we lived next to a housing addition going in. I was probably fifth grade, sixth grade. In those days, Coke, Pepsi, you know, there was no such thing as aluminum cans. They're all in bottles. And some of us might remember that you would get a refund on those bottles. Well, the construction workers would all just leave these bottles sitting around. But in my fifth grade experience, the biggest thing in my life was rocketry. Bu building model rockets was, wow, I was so, <laughs> so loved doing that. And my dad said, great, you pay for it. I found a way to do that. I started collecting pop bottles. I'd go back along that road. I would drag my wagon. I'd collect these bottles. But you know what? You'd say, oh, that sounds like work. In my mind, what did I see? It wasn't, it wasn't work to me. I kept looking for more bottles, more bottles, because all I saw was the enjoyment and the future of those rockets. This is how work is supposed to be. It's supposed to have labor that brings fruit and uh, enjoyment, and it motivates you. And so, as we face this together, don't be afraid. Think past the pile of bills, and think how good is it going to be when I'm free? Begin to think of what you could do. Begin to think. You know, when we built that house, oh, I mean, again, I can't, I can't explain it. I mean, we had hardwood floors. <laughs> it's like, wow. We had crown molding. Wow, we actually had appliances that worked. <laughs> wow. And we had plenty of room and beautiful land. I mean, it was just like heaven on earth to see that come to pass. And it was worth it. And I guarantee it's going to be worth it. So you hang on there. This assignment, do it as husband and wife. Get the bills out there. No pointing fingers now. But I didn't know you used the visa for that. It does, no pointing fingers. Fingers just... Get the bills out there on the table, and let's get them added up, all right? Is that good enough? All right, session one, then. That's, that's going to help you get started, and uh, trust God. We're going to be free. It's going to work out, but we'll look forward to next week, and so we'll see you again next week at our Financial Freedom Small Group. Have a great week. Get your assignment done. I'll see you then. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Stand with me today. I believe, now you know tomorrow we'll go through three more sessions if you want to come. I um, apologize. Like my mouth kept getting dry. And I was probably talking fast, wasn't I? Because I always talk fast. Either I'm excited or I feel like I have to press time. But anyway. <laughs> I'll say this, Drenda, and our, our passion sincerely is that we want you free. I mean, we want you free. I mean, I, when I, I want you free. I mean, God wants you free. Stop answering me back like that. I'm not talking about your verbal voice. Your mind is answering me. It's saying, I don't think it's possible. I don't know that. Stop that. You need to stop that subconscious arguing with what I'm saying. You need to agree with what God says. Yes. I know you don't know how it's going to happen. That's the cool thing. <laughs> I mean, God's going to help you. You know, he gave us a dream in the night to start a company. He'll, you know, who knows how he'll do yours, but he's going to help you. And I want you on board uh, mentally, spiritually, and we're going to have a great time. But first, I want you on board spiritually. If you're here by chance and, you know, I'll be talking about the economy. I'll be talking some through these sessions about what's happening in our, in our country with some of the changes that are and will be happening. Uh, then trust me, there's some very good reasons why you need to get out of debt past just being free in that sense. There's some things that'll make a huge difference to your family, that, the reasons why you need to be out of debt. Anyway, bow your heads with me today. If you're here and you would say, Pastor Gary, you know, I need God's help. I mean, during the night I lived it. 
like I said, we, this is true story. This is, this is where we were. The doctors didn't know if I'd live or die. I mean, seriously, it was, it was, it was tough. That's where we were. That's where we were. But God is faithful. And uh, he taught us. He taught us. And we want to see you get it we, more than anything. You'll never step into your assignment without getting free. You'll always weigh your assignment against, can I afford it? Can I afford it? Can I afford it? And uh, you need to be free. But to be free, you need God's help. And so I'm going to ask, you know, the Bible says it's so simple to know God. Whoever calls in the name of Jesus has the legal right to be part of his kingdom, a citizen and a child of his kingdom. Now, a citizen has legal rights. A child has the inheritance or basically has the entire estate. You've got both. You've got the whole thing. The Bible says to have that benefit is just calling on the name of Jesus with a sincere heart. And the Holy Spirit will meet you right there. Trust me, that day that I crawled up that little bedroom and called out to God, man, I'll tell you. I was actually shocked he spoke to me that fast, really. I'm glad he did. But you know, in reality, I didn't have to live those nine years like that. It was lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Some of you are really good at robbing Peter to pay Paul. And, you know, I appreciate your accounting skills. But there's a better way to live. And so I'm inviting you tonight to say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ and to begin this journey with his help. You online as well. So we're going to pray together. Everyone here is going to pray out loud. If you're here and you say, you know what? I need God. I need to say yes. I need the Holy Spirit's help. I want to call on the name of Jesus tonight. Just put your hand up. We're all going to pray, but I want you to stick your hand up if you say, that's me. Put your hands up. Yes, thank you. Say, that's me, Pastor. Thank you, thank you. Come on, who else? Monday's coming pretty fast. Yeah, thank you. Monday's coming. Monday's coming. Monday's coming. You got to have answers for life. You got to know how it works. You know, nine years. Thank you, sir. You know, nine years, if I can say it this way, of hell on earth, I didn't have to experience. Say yes. Say yes. Anyone else online? You can say yes. There's a, you can just tap the screen there. Anyone else who would say, hey, that's me. I want to be part of this prayer tonight. I need God's help. I want to win in life. Thank you in the back there. Thank you. Who else? Anyone else? Anyone else? You see, why am I keep asking? Because my, the change in our life happened when I heard God's voice. When I actually cried out to him. Basically saying, okay, I'm done. I have no... No more ability of my own. I'm, I'm done. What should I do? That's when life changed. And he began to teach us. So as we pray, anyone else? One last time. Say, yes, you know what? Monday is coming. I need God. Thank you over here on the left. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, let's all pray out loud. If you raised your hand, please say these words out loud. Mean them from your heart. I believe the Holy Spirit's going to touch you right now. Say, Father, all together, Father, Father. you said in your Bible that if I call upon the name of Jesus, that you'd receive me. Make me brand new on the inside. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me how to live life your way. I need help. Let my name be recorded in heaven on this night. I receive your goodness and your promises are mine. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give yourself a hand. You can have a seat. Uh, these workbooks are out in the lobby for sale if you, want, if you want one for the other services or through these next two weeks. If you want to follow along, you can pick one up. might be helpful. Um, and in the future, if any of you, of course, see yourself leading a small group like this, I would try to, try to attend every session and... Uh, Boy, it's fun to watch people's light, uh, eyes light up when they see they can be out of debt in four years, three years, or, you know. I've had so many people come up and say, well, it's really tough, you know. I go through the numbers. Well, you can be out of debt in three years. It's fun to watch their face light up, see the possibility. 
All right, do anyone join me, sweetie? We're going to receive our Saturday night uh, offering tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I know that you are uh, take this young lady. We've been together for what, for 39 years? Almost 39. Whenever I'm teaching, she is writing as fast as she can write. And you would say, well, hasn't she heard this stuff before? <laughs> yes, she has. But the Holy Spirit's adding insights every time she hears it yes. that she's writing down. So. Absolutely. I hear something and I'm convicted every time that this is what we're called to do. Yes. I remember back 25, 30 years ago when before we even pastored the church, we would go and share what he's sharing right now with you. And I remember him talking about the threat of China back then and the currency and the purchasing of things up at properties. And at that time, I think there was $7 yep. trillion dollars national yeah, debt. Yeah, $7 trillion, yes. And now it's $27 trillion. How long could that keep going on at your house? Mm. How long? Can't. So it's sobering and at the same time reminding you that you really are passing through. The Bible says that every kingdom in the earth in the last day will be shaken. Every nation will be shaken. And that also it says for you to arise and shine for your light has come and the Praise glory God. of the Lord is risen upon you. Mm. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness, the people, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Amen. And I Amen. believe part yes. of his glory being seen upon you Praise is God. that you aren't a slave yes. to the lender. You're not in that position where you have to ask, well, can I, you know, ask my master, can I go do this? You are completely free and you have one master. Amen. And it's Jesus. And so we want, Amen. we want that for your life. And we believe that as things get darker in the world, they get brighter in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Yes. yes. So yes. don't you be afraid and don't you despair and don't give way to all those things that are going on. But keep your eyes, put your eyes on Jesus and let's go on this journey together and ask him, okay, Lord, show me how do we get out of debt? Show me, Lord, the plan. Show me what to do, how to maneuver. He will do it for you. He did it for yes. us. And the reason he did it for us is he delights in using the foolish things, right? Yeah, to demonstrate true. his that's glory. So right. if you feel foolish in your finances and you feel like you've made a lot of mistakes, let me just say also, though, somebody set you up. Somebody set you up. Right. You may not have known what was going on. You didn't know the schemes of the enemy. And so uh, Gary's unveiling those schemes to you so you can open your eyes and it should make you a little mad. Actually, it should make you a lot mad because you were set up to fail by a system and yep. someone's been profiting from That's you. Right. That's right. Pastor, did I get this right? I just want to be sure. When I was adding these numbers up, mm -hmm. a $250,000 house, mm -hmm. we're going to pay 356000 extra in interest. Mm -hmm which is going to be 606000 for the house. Yes. Then we're going to pay another 142000 in taxes. And tithes. And tithes. On the interest. On the interest. Mm -hmm. So then to we're going to... To get the money okay. to pay the interest. So right. for a $250,000 house, we're going to pay $748,000 house for the house. Yeah. I had all those numbers together. Mm -hmm. So uh, Think about that yeah. when you sign on the paper. <laughs> Houses are wonderful things, but you can't pay it out over the distance of that time unless you think you're going to have that much increase on the value of that house think about what you're doing now house is a more important thing than all these other you things people go into debt paid for paid off houses also go up in value yeah <laughs> <laughs> now I understand you know I, I understand the rates are low and there's leverage and all I understand that I understand that. I'm not, just I'm, not dis, I'm not discounting that. I'm just it's saying It's just a that, principle to show you what you pay for something is not what right. you thought you paid for it when you bought it Yes. I know. I know. When we were going through financial difficulty, it was so hard when I'd see other people buying things and he would say, no, we're getting out of debt. And I felt so sorry for myself. Poor us. We don't get to buy this. We don't get to buy that. And when you can't buy something, it's kind of like when you're trying to go on a diet, right? You feel so bad for yourself and you just, yeah. oh, you, you know, the enemy wants you to get into that self-pity. But you got to think where you're headed is greater than what you're letting go of for the moment and keep your eyes on the prize. But I would go through those times. And one night he asked me to go to a, what I thought was a multi-million dollar 
person's home. It was a multi-million dollar house. Yeah. yeah. They were living in a multi-million dollar house and I had an attitude. Anybody ever had an attitude? Ladies, I'm talking to you ladies because this is important. You can't be the one that keeps this from happening. And emotionally, if we make wrong decision, decisions emotionally, feel sorry for ourselves. We can manipulate our husband to where he spends money on things and we buy things we shouldn't buy and it puts us in bondage. And so he said, come up to me on this appointment. And I had an attitude and I said, I don't want to go to some millionaire's house and see their nice house while I'm living in this old farmhouse. We got there, went in their home. We sat down. They got into a discussion that was pretty heated. They couldn't tithe because they were in financial bondage. They couldn't buy furniture. They couldn't buy firewood. They were living in a million, two million, whatever dollar prison. Yep. I went back to my farmhouse and said, praise God, I live in this old farmhouse. Yeah, we don't owe anything for this. <laughs> it's not much, but better is little, right, than a nagging wife, the Bible says. So be careful, ladies. Anyway, but this week I was reminded when we were at a minister's conference I won't share this with any other service, be have a little more time with you. Um, I was reminded of believing God in the small things when we had no money and I had no maternity clothes, pregnant with the first baby and someone blessed me with a dress that was an odd color blue and I had no shoes for the dress. And I prayed, went into a thrift store and there was the odd color blue shoes in a thrift store that matched my odd color dress in my size. That's where my faith started and started working on the little things what and about, believing God for a dishwasher yeah. when the second baby was coming because we had that no dishwasher and seeing that one at a, a garage sale, yeah. the kind that plugs into the faucet that's portable. You young people don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and it was avocado green, but it was $35. <laughs> hey, what about uh, Amy asking for a pair of roller skates? And you said, well, if you're going to get them, you have to ask God for them. And her dad sold used cars, and he bought this car at an auction. In the trunk was the exact yes. roller skates that she asked for. I mean, God can do it. He can do yes. it. You know, he, so, he'll do yes. it. Yes, don't despise the yeah. day of small beginnings. That's and don't right. feel like wherever you're at, is there anything wrong with buying something at a thrift store, a garage sale? No. You just don't stay at that place. You keep progressing in the kingdom of God, but it's okay. The Bible says if we humble ourselves in due season, he will exalt us, right? So better to be humble, go to the thrift store, the garage sales, say no to the things that you want, sell some things, right. quit putting on an image and trying to keep up with the world system yep. and going in deeper and deeper and deeper slavery. Amen. So right. we are called to a higher purpose, and That's it's right. not slavery. Amen. So whatever you have to do to get out of debt, trust the Lord, believe Him, but do whatever it takes. It'll be worth it, I promise you. It will. I remember walking into a person's house. They were so proud of their new house. They'd been there for two weeks. And I went through their finances, and I got done going through it, and I said, sell it. And they did. And they came back. It's hard to talk about it. I've been choking back tears the whole time, sitting there in here, because I know they, this is they, what... They uh, ran into us several years ago and said, you know, the best thing you ever said to us is sell that house. We saved our cash. We paid cash for a house. We have businesses now. We have like five kids. We're, all, we're free financially. And they, God actually set it up that we ran into them at, a, I think, a line in a grocery store or something right beside them. And I'm telling you, do it God's way, man. I tell you, it's God has a way to getting it done. So awesome. All right, we got to take our. I have our one more thing tonight. to say. Okay, it's Saturday night, so go ahead. What do you do when you're about to go on a diet? <laughs> you oh, go yeah, and yeah. you eat everything you can eat for a whole month, telling yourself you're going to go on a diet tomorrow, and you gain five more pounds before you go on your diet. Right? Do not do that with your debt. <laughs> we cannot tell you. How many yeah, people I'll be, yeah, I'll tell say, I'm going to get out of debt. I'm going to get out of debt. Gary goes that. and he sees them and goes, does a plan for them to get out of debt. And when he comes back, they bought a new car. Yeah. And he goes, why did you buy a car? Uh, I thought we were working to get out of debt. Well, we knew you were going to come back and tell us not to buy anything else. So we decided we'd go do it right before you came back. <laughs> like, do you really want to get out of debt? Or are you playing games with yourself? Do you really want to lose weight? Or are you playing games like with yourself? It's like buying the exercise machine that sits in the corner, right? 
So don't don't lie. Let's not lie to Let's ourselves. Uh, Let's make a real God commitment. God has grace Amen. for the journey. He grace does have grace. Journey. Amen. All right, we're going to see of our offering tonight. So stand up with me. Hallelujah. Freedom is worth it. Lay your hand on that. Let's believe God. Let's believe God. Let's just sow this tonight. Now, you can't name your tithe, but if you're giving above your tithe, let's, let's just sow right now. God help us with the grace to get out of debt, get plans, and, you know, get the thing done. So say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's your word. It's your word. Freedom is your word. Freedom is your word. I make a decision tonight. I make a decision that we're walking free. That I'm walking free. I ask you for the grace. I ask you for the grace. The plan. The plan. The strategies. The strategies. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now I want you to stand, just stand for a second. I want to speak over you. Just, just take a moment in the Holy Spirit right now. Just take a moment in the Holy Spirit. Just let him speak to you. Just let him speak to you tonight. Now, Father, we agree with your people tonight. And we step by faith into that grace. We'll speak your word. We'll speak to that mountain of debt. We'll receive those strategies. We'll be diligent to confront what we have to confront. Change what we have to change. And Father, we will walk free. We'll walk in our God-purposed assignment in this generation. We'll not be held captive by debt or finances, but Father, I thank you. You give us finances that are overflowing. Freedom in our finances. Freedom to be generous. Freedom to be uh, provision. Everything we need. Everything we want. <clears throat> every desire we have. We live the good life. Eat the best of the land. And so, Father, I thank you. We're open to your instruction, Holy Spirit. We're open to your instruction. So I thank you, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus. I release that grace that's upon my life into their life right now. We come into agreement. We, I impart right now the grace, Lord, for increase in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. You want to bless them tonight before we leave? I just thank you for great grace on all of us, Lord. You said if we commit our plans to you, that we'd have good success. And so we make a commitment right now to get out of debt, to live free so that we can obey you and do whatever you tell us to do. Yep, yep, and we yep. can move about and, and move in the anointing and move in the glory of God and do whatever we're called to do in this hour, Father. And so we thank you for great grace to run our race and great grace to be free from debt. We believe you, God. Whatever looks impossible, we know with you all things are possible. So we receive that tonight and we say, God, I commit to get out of debt. Just tell him, I commit to get out of debt. I ask you for the grace and I receive the grace to do this in Jesus' name. Yes, yes, Amen. Amen. One Father, thing I, I thank want to remind you. you, I'll use examples and stories here. I'm not saying that's your instruction. If I said someone to sell their house, don't leave here and think, well, we need to sell our house. Follow me? Renting is paying someone else's house payment. Okay, so I'm, if God tells you to sell the house, sell the house. So I'm saying, as I tell stories and examples, don't say, oh, that's what I need to do. You let the Holy Spirit tell you what to do. Okay? You are called to own. You're called to own, to be the head, not the tail, to own. It's just how we go about owning right. it. That's where the devil has misconstrued things and deceived people. And when you, when you said earlier that 90 days, same as cash, do you know when you do 90 days, same as cash, and you don't pay it off in 90 days, do you know what it does? It converts to a very high interest loan to 36%. that you would have never signed that loan paper if you had to sign that much. How much again? 28 to 36%. Debt. And you didn't calculate that. Why? Because you were thinking, I'm going to pay it off in 90 days. If you can't afford to pay it off today, what makes you think you're going to pay it off in 90 days? Yeah. Anyway, we got a lot to cover. So we got uh, seven more sessions. We'll see you uh, in the morning. Our team's up front. If you like prayer, Kingdom Track starts now, right around the corner. Uh, we have a hot buffet waiting on you as I speak. And you can sign up for small groups. And again, tomorrow's three different se three sessions. All right. God bless you.